I'm cons- I'm we're concerned. God, God, God's not going to allow it to go on forever. God's not going to allow all this evil to go on forever. There's going to come a day when, when it's going to end. It's going to end. Your life of sin is going to end. It's either, it's, either, it's either when you repent and you give your life to the Lord, or it's when God requires your soul, you stop breathing, you die, and then you stand before the Almighty, the invincible, immortal God, who is going to bring you into account. You're going to give an account of what you did with your life and what you did with Jesus Christ. And... And on that day, if your name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life, the Bible says you will be cast into the lake of fire. A lake of fire, burning with brimstone, hell, for sin. The Bible of Jesus said, he said, he said, uh, he said, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the liars, they all will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. The people who have their part, and and they partake in these things. They're partakers of the things that that God says are wicked. They're sinful and they're evil. God shows no partiality to anybody. That all men would fear God. That all men would, would, would turn to Jesus Christ. That's what you need to do today. Give your life to Jesus and build your house upon Him. She might be a holy people. You know, this is the problem is that this, you know, if, if you know, the Bible says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. No one's going to see God without holiness. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 7, it says, you are not called to uncleanness, but in a holiness. But in a holiness. He who rejects this, rejects not man, but God. He was given us of the Holy Spirit. He rejects the call to purity and holiness. Rejects God, who has given us life through the Holy Spirit. When you reject, when you reject, when you refuse, when you deny Christ, the Bible says he will deny you. He will deny you. Uh, You know, this is serious, guys, because without Jesus, without his approval on your life, there's only one place you're going to end up. Torment. Torment. If you stand before Jesus and he says, I don't know this guy. I don't know this drunkard. I don't know this liar. I don't know this thief. I don't know this Satan worshiper. I don't know him. Guess what? It's over for you. It's over. So... So instead of that being your fate, instead of that being your fate, that you die, and Jesus says, I don't know you, depart from me, into the place prepared for the devil and his angels. That's what he said would happen in Matthew 25. He'll say to the hypocrites, he'll say, depart from me, into the place prepared for the devil and his angels, and we'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping on that day. Do you not fear God? Do you not fear the Lord who can destroy your body and soul in hell? I know you ignore it. Ignore it. Put on your earplugs because you're right there. And they're not doing anything. You don't want to ignore God. You don't want to ignore God unless He ignore you on the day that you need His help. On the day that you need Him to deliver you from your, from your peril. God wants to deliver you today. God wants to make you a born-again Christian, a new creation today. Today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart, lest you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Today is the day. The devil's trying to get you to put it off. The devil's trying to tell you it's okay to slip back into your sin. The devil, that's the one. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not God telling you it's okay to do that. Smoke a little weed, drink a little, get, 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 drink some liquor and get drunk. That's not God telling you to do that. God's telling you that you need to repent today. You need to, you need to make a clean cut. You need to come to the light now. Lest you be consumed, lest you be overtaken, lest you be taken away. That's the warnings in the Bible. The taken and snared and caught, caught in their sin and dragged away to, to, the, to the place of, of utter uh, loss. 
a loss, lose your life, lose your soul, lose everything. Lose, lose, lose your opportunity that God gave you. You get one opportunity and you squander it away, you squander away God's word in your life. You just ignore it. It means nothing to you. You just say, oh, well, whatever. You know, that's going to that's be the end. Okay, well, well, come on, be separate, sir. This event is wicked. I don't know why anybody should love God would be at this event. Hanging out here in the midst of all this wickedness. Doesn't make sense to me. No, I'm not even that, but I'll tell you this much. I'll tell you this much. You're at least confused at what it means to live a, an abundant life as a Christian being here. This event doesn't represent anything that is good of God. It represents idolatry, self-indulgence, and drunkenness. God would take you into a place where you want to worship Him and serve Him and be away from all these filthy things. Consecrate yourself to God. Be separate from the wickedness, the influence. There's an influence. Evil communication corrupting good character. And the Bible says, as he who walks with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. A companion of fools will be destroyed. That's scary. That's scary. You know, when you think about it, God gathering together people in their foolish life of sin, and they're all being destroyed together. They're all being destroyed together. The Bible says, it says that, the righteous should choose his friends wisely because the way of the wicked will lead him astray. The way of the wicked, the way of, of the wickedness that goes on at these events, it'll lead you astray. It'll lead you astray from God. It'll take you away from holiness and, and, and righteousness and it'll lead you into your sin. It'll strengthen you in your sin. That's what happens in, in these events. People being led away. And the Bible says, it says that he who wanders from the path of understanding shall remain in the assembly of the dead. Remaining in the assembly of the dead. Caught in death. Caught in destruction. Caught in a place where you cannot get out. You cannot get out when you die in your sin. You will not receive another opportunity. It's right now. God is telling you, now you can have mercy. Now you can be forgiven. Now you can change it. Now you can be renewed by the spirit of your mind. But you wouldn't want to get drunk on liquor anymore. You wouldn't want to look at that filthy stuff on the internet. No, you would cleanse yourself. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double-minded. That's what it does. You're unstable in all your ways. You're unstable. You have no place to stand. It is shifting sand of your sin because you're not doing the will of God. You, the Bible says, do not be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word of God. Jesus said that I'll tell you the man who is like, who heard my word and did them, he's like in a wise man who dug down deep and built this house upon the rock. When the rain descended and the floods came and the winds beat on that house, it could not shake it. Praise the Lord, because it was founded upon the rock. But Jesus said that I'll tell you who the man is like who heard my word and did nothing. He's like a foolish man who built his house on the sand without a foundation. When the, uh, when the rain descended, the floods came and the winds beat on that house, it immediately fell. It immediately fell. Sir, I don't want you to fall when that time comes. Your time of reckoning, your time of judgment, your time to have to pay. Now, Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. That's the gospel, the good news. You don't have to pay. On that day, when you die, if you die as a sinner, you're going to have to pay. God's going to say, pay up. God's going to say, pay for your sins. You wanted to live in sin. You wanted to deny the blood of Christ. Now you got to pay for this life of wickedness. You have to. You're going to go. You're going to have to give an account. And God's going to require the payment, the restitution. Yes, the equal weights of measure. You see, God is a God of even scales. What does your smoking and your drinking and your lusting require of you? It requires death. It requires torment. It requires judgment. Sin against God. You've broken his laws and commandments. You've ignored the king, his grace, his beauty, his, his magnificence, and his excellence. Men in their, in their rebellion. They've refused and gone their own way. Everything inside of them darkened. Their foolish hearts were darkened, the Bible says. Although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, but they were not thankful. For nothing to be wise, they became fools, it says. They became fools. Man, it's sad. It's sad for me to think about how somebody could be, be, become a fool. It says they knew God. They didn't even glorify Him as God. They weren't thankful. They weren't thankful. You know, that's, you know, you know sinners, sinners... Sinners are the only thing on earth that don't give thanks to God. I learned that the other day from my brother in Christ. It's true. 
trees give thanks to God. The birds give thanks to God. Yes, the, the, the lions and the cats and the dogs and the little ants and the little, the little, everything gives thanks to God. But you, but you, you don't give thanks to God. You don't give glory to God. You can't. You're, you're the one thing that doesn't give thanks to God. All creation, all creation gives thanks to God. Why won't you give him glory? Why won't you give him thanks? Why won't you give him honor and praise? For the light. Hey, you see, you didn't give thanks to God right there. You didn't thank God for this street preacher that came out to tell you about what you need. You didn't want to receive the blessing. But you're going to be left with the curse. It's your choice today. The Bible says that God will curse your blessings if you don't repent. I read that today. You're going to be cursed even in your blessings. The things that you think are good. Your job and your, your health and your money and all the things. God can curse that blessing. That's a scary thing. When even the things that are good in your life are tainted with wickedness. It gets in and it moves in and taints everything. But when you come to Christ. When you say, no, I'm not going to live for sex. I'm not going to live for money. I'm not going to trust in my strength, my own intellect, my own accomplishments, my own good deeds, my own good works, my own good books. And you say, oh, I'm, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to lift up Jesus. He's worthy. He's deserving of my attention, my glory. First fruits of my life, go to him. He brought me into this world. He can take me out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, you worship God. You worship him and you say, God, I need hope beyond this life. This life is ending. This life is fading away. But Jesus goes on forever. His beauty, His glory, His mercy, His kingdom. That's where I want to be. I want to be where He is. If you're where Christ is, you go, you go on forever. You have the victory. But if you ignore it you, and you continue to, to slide back and slide away, God will shut the door in your face and leave you outside where the dogs are. He'll leave you outside with the murderers. He'll leave you outside with the drug dealers. He'll leave you outside with the homosexuals. He'll leave you outside. But inside, inside are the, are the children of the kingdom. They're called faithful and chosen. Chosen! And they're faithful. God makes them faithful people. Trustworthy. I wasn't trustworthy. You see, it was a miracle happened to me. I was a wretched sinner. A wretched hey, man. Sinner. Practicing what was evil. Smoking marijuana. That's what I was living a life of evil. Desire. Desiring sex. Desiring to lift up myself. It was all about myself. I didn't care about my neighbor. I didn't love my neighbor. My was just was abound in love towards it all. For it's all about the love to give thanks to God for the saints, the saints of God. When you're thankful for the people of God, the brotherhood of God, the kingdom of God, which does not come with observation, it comes within you. The kingdom of God can live within you. It's a miracle. It's a miracle, a spiritual house that God's trying to build. But you're a house of demons, aren't you? You're a house of demons. What kind of devils have gotten in? The devils need to come out. Get the house clean. Because that more devils would not come back because Jesus said that more devils do come back. And the last thing is worse than the first. The devils are getting they're getting released. More devils, more demons from the internet, more demons from the drugs, more demons from the liquor. But Jesus Christ has power and authority to cast out the demons. God. You gotta read the Bible, man. Care for your soul, man. Demons. There's a battle that's going on right now. Listen, man. What's your name? Sir, I'll call you sir. Sir, you gotta understand the battle that's going on right now. There are demons and angels right now that are warring for your soul. Your soul's in the balance. Now I'm here as a messenger. I'm delivering the message from the king, the Lord of Lords, your creator, God, the one who fashioned you in your mother's womb. He decreed your things. He said, well, you, let there be John. Let there be Billy. Let there be Susan. No, no, I'm saying God fashioned you, your life. Everything was preordained and predetermined because he knows. He knows. I pray that he would know that you would repent. I pray that he would He would grant you repentance and he would lead you. Sir, I, I want to preach right now. I want to preach right now. No, it's not. It's not a prayer. The Bible is... Ma'am, ma'am, no. Ma'am, the, the, the Bible is... No. It's one spirit, one spirit, one God and Father, one faith, one baptism, one body, not multiple spirits. The Bible says, test every spirit to see they be of God. Well, you need to understand the spirit of God. We agreed that you only be here for right. so long, and you're going to move on, right? We, 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 we just got that. You don't reject me. You reject, you reject the message. You were standing there. Sorry. Sorry for you. you there's, there's, there's no getting around this. Are you, either you're my sister in Christ or you're not. Ma'am, I wish you were my sister. 
I want you to be my sister in Christ, but instead people are companions with fools. They're companions with drunkards. Whose sister are you? Whose brother are you? Are you a, look, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, I am a companion with all those that fear God. Fear God. You fear God? Would you fear God? You can be my companion. Fear God, then why? Why would you live in a pattern that is evil and let the devil smoking and drinking and looking at war now? Look, I was this way, and I have compassion on you. I'm talking to everybody. There's something greed, uh, you know, you know, selfishness, too much alcohol, fight night. These things will get in. They will alter the state of your mind, and they will, they will, they will condemn your soul. And yeah, I don't want you to be. No, God does not want you to be this way. Deliverance. Deliverance is what God offers you. Is that, is that the message? How do you interpret that? How do you interpret being delivered from sin? You said there's multiple interpretations. I'm telling you there's deliverance through one, Jesus. It's not multiple interpretations. No, no, it's not benediction, Catholicism. It's born again. It's new creation. Repent. There's only one interpretation of this. You know, you turn from your sin, man. Turn if you have no sin. No, the Bible says you, you do not know God when you say, I have no sin. I know I have sin, but you know what? I turn from my bike night sin. I turn from those things that are evil. I turn to God. There's a lot of sin out here. There's a lot of sin. God's trying to get it to the surface that you might understand the call to be delivered. You need to be delivered from this peril that you're facing. You're in great danger. You're, you're, you're one step away from falling off a building. One step away from self-destructing, self-imploding. You know, but God, God wants to put it all together, put the pieces together of your life. He wants to make sense of your life. She might be in the kingdom. She might understand that all things work together for good to those that love God and are the call of his purpose, his good purpose. God's got a good purpose. God's got a kingdom that he is working right now on the earth, a people he is establishing, a people he is building up, a holy people, a royal priesthood, it says, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. See, God wants you to have an acceptable sacrifice, something that is a worthy sacrifice to God, a life that is a fragrant aroma, a life that is a reflection of what God has done in your life through Jesus. That's what you're supposed to live as. You're supposed to be dead to this world and alive to Christ. But instead, you're dead to Christ and you're alive to your sin. And God needs to change this. God needs to change the reality of the, of the, of the, of the, the patterns and the, and the desires and the affiliations, everything becomes new when you become a Christian. It's a new mind, it's a new man, it's a new destiny. Where are you headed, heaven or hell? Where are you headed? To the grave, stuck? Stuck in the grave, stuck? No hope in the grave, hopeless? We have a hope of eternal life we bring to you today. I, uh, I know that I'm heaven bound. I know that God loves me. I know that my sin is not going to destroy me because of what Christ has done in my life. I see it. It's evident. It's evident. But, you know, it's so sad to watch people who are blinded by the God of this world, the devil. They're blinded. The veil is over your heart and mind. It needs to be taken away. When you break your heart, you cry out to God. You become sorrowful with tears. You rend your heart. The Bible says, break your heart. Rend it. God does not despise a broken heart, the Bible says. A contrite spirit, he will not despise. But pride, pride, arrogance self-will, self-establishment, all these things. God was, he says, he, he, he despises that. He, he, he is against that type of attitude. Because who are we in the sight of God? Who are we? We're just sheep. We're just dust. We're so small in the sight of a magnificent, awesome, amazing God who created the universe, who established the heavens. He, he, he runs everything, the clouds, the solar system, the, 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 the uh, you know, hydrological cycle, everything. The seasons come in the unseen realm of, of the spiritual realm and the, and the elements are all held together by Jesus Christ, the Word of God, the Spirit of God giving life. Jesus Christ. Everything, every blessing is, comes from above, the Bible says. From the Father of lights in whom there's no variation or shadow of turning. We're here today to tell you that you need to acknowledge, you need to give Him glory, you need to worship Him. You need to understand. You need to set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died, the Bible says, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you will appear with Him in glory. In glory, there's glory. Where's the glory? I don't see it out here. I don't see any amens at bright night. I just don't. I don't see any amen out here. I, 
I see the I see the curse of your sin. And how are you going to have an amen if you end up a drunkard and end up in hell? How? How are you going to have the amen, the seal of God? The Bible says that the seal of God stands firm to having this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his and let every man that names the name Christ depart from evil. Depart from iniquity. That's what this nation needs. What you need tonight. You need repentance. You need to repent from that thing that is destroying you. What is it today, sir? Do you understand that you sinned against God? Your creator, the perfect father, the perfect blessed one who dwells in a, he's called the ancient of days. The ancient of days. He can give you more life than this temporary life that you are you are fading away. I am fading away, but Christ lives forever. And the Bible says he lives forever to make intercession for us. He is a great high priest. He is a brother, a father to the, to the children. Jesus, we need the advocate. This is what he's called the advocate. He comes near to the right hand of the poor, it says, to deliver him from his enemies, from those who try to condemn him. Don't you want that? Don't you want the Christ next to you in your day of trouble? Say, no, this one's forgiven. No, this one's sealed. No, this one's washed. He's mine. I purchased him by my own blood on the tree. It's what you need. It's what we need. It's what I need. It's more important than anything. Being the purchased possession of God. That when we were redeemed on that day, the resurrection day, the day of the Lord that's going to come burning with an oven. And the wicked and all those who are proud people will be as stubble, the Bible says. What's wrong, man? I know you are. I know I'm telling you what God's word says. You gotta obey it, man. You would love me, Jesus. That's what you would love me,
uses the preaching. It's effective. The reason why people get upset is not because of me. I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 I'm not chasing you down. It's okay. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Oh yeah, we do. Okay, so care for everybody here. That's why we have to broadcast the message. It's an urgent message. It's a good, good news message that, sh that God wants to forgive you and change you. There's blessings in what we have to bring today. I know some people don't like this, the loudness of the bullhorn. I understand that, but there is a purpose. I pray that you would see our mission and cause. God is concerned. God is crying out. The Bible says that the, 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 the Father is crying out in us be reconciled to God we implore you we plead with you on Christ's behalf we plead with you to get right with God you don't understand the danger that you're in right now in your sin there's an eternity waiting of torment an eternity of destruction that God will decree an issue on the day when he judges God will judge God will judge The Bible says in Psalms chapter 9, it says, I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all his marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in the Lord, and I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. He said, you have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have brought it out their name forever and ever. O oh, enemy, destructions are finished forever. You have rebuked cities. Even their memory has perished. You have destroyed cities. Not rebuked. He's destroyed cities. God has destroyed cities. Their memory was perished. Sodom and Gomorrah, that's an example. Cities that were destroyed, never again to be built again. So God can destroy people and he can destroy cities he can destroy the wicked and blot their name out erase them from the book of the living and he can destroy cities god has authority and power to destroy lands because of the evil that takes place in them god did it from the whole that's what he was talking about he has destroyed cities he is their memory is perished but the lord shall endure forever the lord shall endure forever jesus endures forever even if these cities and people are destroyed, Jesus endures forever. Amen. It says, He shall judge the nation. He shall judge the world in righteousness. Righteousness. He will judge the world. Judge. Jesus is going to judge the world. And it says, He will administer justice for the uprightness. But he will administer uprightness. Okay. He will administer. He will administer uprightness. No, administer justice for the upright. And he will administer um, judgment for the for the peoples in uprightness. For the people. He will administer justice for the peoples in uprightness. Jesus, the, the King of Kings. He will administer this justice, judgment, that we need who are oppressed. It says, for the people to end up rightness. He will. He will judge. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, it says, righteousness is the belt of his loins and justice, the belt of his ways. It says, in righteousness, he judges the people. In equity, he will administer judgment.
Jesus is going to administer judgment for the peoples in uprightness to deliver the oppressed of the earth. The Bible says it says that he caused judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still when God arose to judgment. God's going to rise to judgment. He's going to make it be seen and heard from heaven. The judgment of God is coming from heaven. People, get ready. Get ready for this. It's coming and the earth is going to fear and be still. The earth, the very earth that you're standing in.